Hey there, fellows. Now, you might remember that we have this lovely molding machine. Yeah, we've done some interesting stuff with it. Such as the time we made a transparent rocker cover, a see-through oil pan. We were able to see how the motor oil ebbs and flows, how it drips back down into the pan, and we even tried starting the car we had it on in sub-zero temperature. Then there was the transparent differential cover. That allowed us to see how the diff is lubricated. Anyway, so I've been reading your comments and... We've been getting a lot of requests. Hell, we'd even like to try it ourselves. That is, make a transparent oil filter. The housing is made of steel, so we don't... Well, I mean, in theory, we do know what's inside. But I'm fairly sure that not many people have... actually seen what's going on inside of it. There are a lot of things to consider along the way. But in the meantime, let's stamp out... I mean, put together... a few of these. So that we have filters to spare. Then we fit one of them to an engine. We might want to pour in some fresh oil, since we do want transparency as opposed to the whole thing going black right away. We want to see exactly how it fills up, whether it does all the way, are there going to be bubbles, and so on. Nobody knows. But let's find out, shall we? We try see-through oil filter. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. All right, here's what we're looking at. I think it looks pretty good. The housings have shaped up very nicely. Well, I mean, the first one we made didn't turn out ideal. It's a bit wrinkled, but things went so much better with the second one. So it did take a practice shot to figure out how to do this right. But once we did, we started seeing much better results. They are a bit filthy. That's from when we were gluing them together. In any case, you can see all of the guts. The filter itself, though you can't see the drainage valve. But you can the spring and the bypass valve. As for why we made three, well, just in case. Now it's a matter of removing the stock filter, replacing it with the see-through. Is it gonna hold up? What do you guys think? Because we didn't use any rivets or screws to secure it. We decided we'd make do with windshield sealer, which has good adhesion to pretty much anything. Though we weren't using any primer. Right, should we fit it? Or warm up the engine a bit first? Yeah, let's do that. Let it run for a bit. But not for too long, this is plastic. Let it rip. We are ready. Removing the old filter. Now we really should drop the oil, because it looked clean enough on the dipstick, but in fact it's not that fresh. Right, let's change the motor oil. We do want it to be clean, right? Yeah, I also think so. To make sure we have great visibility. Okay, we've dropped the oil. Which should we use? Let's try this one. I'm gonna screw it on. Wait. I want to check it first. Yeah, it looks alright. Okay, terrific. Alright, nice. Now we need to add some oil. 
we decided to go with a lower viscosity to keep the pressure in the system down. And we'll be adding it the good old-fashioned way. Three and a half liters should be enough. Maybe add some more? Well, it is above the minimum, so we should be all right. Oh, fine. Let's add another half a liter. That should be more than enough. Okay, we filled and prepared the engine. You know what I think we should do? To avoid any possible setbacks, I think we should kick this off by simply turning it over without starting it. In order to see if the oil begins to flow and see what happens to the filter itself, because I'm curious to know whether these transparent filters will even hold up. Okay, we're ready. Give the starter motor a turn, will you? But where's the oil? Oh, there it is. There it goes. It's almost completely full. Though a small portion up top remains empty. So you do see an air bubble. That is cool. And once you stop, the oil level drops. Just a tiny bit, but still. Can you spin it some more? Well, of course you'll have some left in the galleries. Yeah, the bubble isn't disappearing. Yeah, it rises, then it takes a slight dip. It goes up and down. Okay, we've observed how the filter is filled up. It slowly but surely gets there. So far, things are looking pretty good. Though we did notice a small air pocket that doesn't want to go away. I guess it's supposed to be there by design. Okay, now the interesting part. We're gonna let the engine run and see if the filter holds up. All right, the air pocket is gone now. The filter is full. All because of the increase in pressure. Terrific. As for how the oil circulates, well, we're not really noticing it. Well, it has obviously caught a bit of dirt. Oh wait, those bubbles are a clear indication of how the oil is circulating. Do you see those bubbles? My guess is that it's the paper getting soaked with oil and releasing any air it contained. Man, this looks so cool. The bubbles actually give you a pretty good idea of how the oil circulates. Take a look at how the oil is slowly circulating in there. And there you go. Yeah, it's meant to go down like that. The pressure goes down, and we see a slight dip. Oh, wow, look at that. It definitely did catch a bit of dirt. Anyway, the air bubbles were showing us how the oil circulates. What's going on inside the filter? However, it is not the clearest picture you can imagine. I mean, you sort of see it, but it's really not all that clear. Which is why I suggest trying something we've done before in the past. We're gonna take a bit of this stuff. Now, it's not going to harm the engine in any way. Moreover, the last time we used it, the engine even got quieter. So I'm going to mix it with some oil in a cup. We'll pour the mixture in. We'll actually even be able to see how much time passes between pouring in some kind of additive and it mixing with the motor oil. So yeah, let's mix oil with a bit of silver, fire up the engine, and see how long before it shows up in the filter. We'll be able to see it very clearly in the oil. Okay, I've poured in the oil. What did you just break off there? Yeah, that should be enough. Oh, that looks so nice. Fantastic. We'll be painting the oil to better see how it flows. Pouring it in. Ooh. 
Okay, let's fire it up and have a look. Wow, that didn't take long at all. Holy cow. Like, right away you see it. You can see how it's coming in through here. Through the multiple small orifices. Then it goes through the filter element and back into the system. I'm of course referring to these holes in the filter. The oil goes through them, back inside through the filter element, and then it comes back out through the middle. Well, of course it goes back into the engine. It's not going to pour out onto the road. But then again, with this engine, who even knows? And you can clearly see it circulating. The flow rate is pretty impressive. It showed up right away. But then again, three and a half liters of oil... It's not all that much. I mean, some cars use eight to ten liters. And those have oil pumps with considerably higher flow. But I mean, even here, the circulation happens pretty fast. And yeah, the silver gives you a much better visual. And let's not forget that we have a bypass valve right here. The purpose of which is to keep the filter from rupturing. Of course, there's another one in the oil pump. But this one does play a vital role during the initial cold start. On ours, we see a sort of black dot. Why don't we check to see how it works? Shut it off and start it right away. Let's see if it even moves. Nope, not enough pressure, apparently. If the oil were cold, I'm sure something would have happened. Okay, now I suggest we bring the revs up and see what that does. Why are you all backing away? I thought I heard you say nothing is gonna happen. But as soon as I went for the throttle, everybody disappeared. Wait, where is it? No, oh, there it is. Oh, look at it go. Man, that just changes everything. Yeah, look at that. It is very obvious what's going on. Did the valve open? I don't think it did. Okay, let's bring the revs up even higher then. Switch it off! Switch it off! <laughs> it found a weak spot in the filter. Eh, no worries. The side has ruptured. Well, what can you do? Okay, I suggest we wait until it pours out, or maybe just remove it right away. We do have two more of these left. It's just like when you buy parts from a store. Whatever was made before lunch break is good quality, but after the lunch break, not so much. Or was it the other way around? It depends on the manufacturer, I guess. Oh man, I didn't even screw it on that tight. And I'm still... having trouble removing it. Whatever. Yeah, right here on the side. See how it ruptured? Has it gotten warm? Well, it has, but I wouldn't say it's hot. Okay, we've given the engine 15 or 20 minutes to cool off. And so now, simply installing a new filter and observing how the oil flows in there, well... That we've already seen, but we do have another idea. Now, at the start of this video, we suggested pouring in some fresh oil. We did, and almost immediately it became dark. Now, the silver should give us a really good idea as to how much would be left over. If, say, you decide to do an oil change without flushing the engine before pouring in the fresh motor oil. 
Anyway, let's go ahead and drain this oil, install a filter, pour in some fresh oil, start the car and see how much oil with silver is left in the system. Is it gonna be a lot or is it not? All right, let's drop the oil. Yeah, we should install the filter. Yeah, I'm in the process. Dude, you don't have to pour in every drop of it. Enough. That's enough. What lost oil? Dude, you're pouring in the dirt. Who's gonna get sprayed? Ooh. Ooh. Well, yeah. The silver particulates you can see very well. And there are a bunch of them in there. As you can plainly see. Oh, yeah, look at that. I mean, it's not a horrifying amount by any means. But there is plenty of it. Man, look at it. Swimming in there. Yeah, well... There you have it. So the amount of old oil left over after an oil change... I mean, it's hard to work out a percentage. I don't know, maybe it's about five? Maybe a bit more? Okay, let's give it some gas. Hey, where'd you all go? Get back here. I need you all to be here when I... No? They're scared. Switch it off. That's a defective filter. Yeah, this one did have a... a tiny wrinkle. That's not the housing rupturing. The oil blew past the sealant. Well, fellas, we couldn't have wished for a better result. Both of the filters were holding up. Well, until we went... and gave it some revs. That's when... that's when the pressure becomes a bit much. I mean, you clearly get way more flow with that increase in pressure. So yeah, you get a dramatic increase in flow, in pressure. That is the reason why these have a bypass valve. It's there to keep the filter from rupturing. Well, at the very least, ours did work without exploding. Anyway, this was a good one. 107% success rate and all. And that's all I got for you, fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.